Checker Taxi? Yes, your radio dispatch checker will reach your door promptly. Checker Taxi, call Monroe 63700. The FBI in Peace and War. The FBI in Peace and War is brought to you by refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day, as millions do. The lively, long-lasting flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The pleasant chewing adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Another great story based on Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. Drama, thrills, action. Tonight's story, The Pole Cats. And here's to our unexpected victory in the third district. I give you our new state assemblyman, Honest John. Oh, not again. All right, you fellas carry on. I'll take this. Political club, Bonnie Hollis, please. Bernie, this wins. Vince, how are you, boy? Come on over. We're having a little celebration. Never mind the celebration. Listen to this. Hey, hey, fellas, I just you hold out it down the second, boys. Hold it down, huh? Vince, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear a word you're saying. Will you repeat that, please? I said the governor is ordering an official public recount of the election vote. What? That's it, Barney. He's sending out a directive at the state's attorney's request first thing in the morning. Okay, Vince. Thanks for letting me know. Barney, I don't have to tell you what any close examination of those registry books can do. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. Okay. Let them send out any directive they want. They won't find anything. Just leave this to me. To all police commissioners, chiefs of police, and sheriffs of this state... You are hereby directed by order of the governor to place under guard pending official public recount of the election vote, all voting machines, registry books, and voting records. Deputies are to be put in charge of all machines and records with instructions not to allow access of any kind by any person. Acknowledgement of this communication is requested. Hello, Barney. Come in. Thanks. Oh, well, uh, let me take your thing. I'll, uh, I'll just dump him on the chair here. Gordon. Uh... You know Mrs. Kinney, don't you? Yeah, yeah, of course. How are you, Helen? I'm just fine, Barney. Sit down, please. I'm uh, sorry to barge in at this time of the night, but uh, this just couldn't wait. Oh, that's quite all right. After almost 30 years of people barging in, I'm rather used to it. Can I get you something to drink, Barney? No, no, thanks. Cigar? No, not, not a thing, really. Well, then, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll retire and let you gentlemen discuss whatever you have to. Good night, dear. Good night, Helen. Good night, Barney. Good night. Don't keep Gordon long, will you? He's been working too hard lately and no I, rest. I won't, Helen, I promise. Well? Relax, Barney. You only called half an hour ago. I need a little time. A little is all I have. I also need you to be absolutely frank with me. How frank? Well, either you fill me in on the whole story or get yourself another boy. All right. The whole story, Barney. Straight. Yeah, yeah, I understand. All right. Let's have it. This There's going to be a recount of the vote as party leader of the county. You can't afford it. Why not? It's the old story, Gordon. Fraudulent registrations? <sighs> well, you wanted it straight. 2,500 of them. Can I, uh, I change my mind about that drink? Go ahead. 2,500. Enough to swing the close ones our way. I didn't think there'd be trouble. We were very careful. No, yeah, you must have been. Uh, what about the Attorney General's challenge list? Well, our people had instructions to withdraw from the polls without voting if they were challenged. More than half of them did. Mm-hmm. Well, well, that was sensible, but it's also what probably put the bug in the governor's ear. Yeah, probably. You won't join me. No, not now. Ah, you're in a spot, Barney. No doubt about that. No doubt at all. But you wouldn't be if those voting records weren't available for recount. Is that it? That's it. <sighs> I have the line page number of every one of our fraud voters. Now, if those pages should happen to get missing from the registry books, my worries would be over. Barney, yeah. this isn't the old days. You can't get away with a stunt like that anymore. Can't, sir. Too rough a try. My advice is forget it. Uh -huh. Suffer your first loss. It's still good. Gordon, uh, Yes? Maybe you didn't understand me so good. I don't want to suffer my first loss. Any loss, for that matter. You don't? Uh-uh. 
There's an envelope in my pocket that makes it action rather than words. This is worth 50000 to me, good. You um, have the page number? And the line on the page. Every one of them. Pour yourself another drink. I want to make a call. Uh, um, pour me one with you. Okay. I may be able to help you, Barney. An idea hit me just this minute. I may be able to help you out at that. Back to the polecats in just a moment. Friends, one reason it's a good idea to keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy is that you can chew and enjoy this delicious treat right while you're doing other things. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is swell to chew while you're working, for instance, and while you're driving your car or enjoying your favorite sports or hobbies. You don't have to take time out. You can chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum even with both hands busy. The lively, long-lasting flavor is always refreshing, and the pleasant chewing makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum handy in your purse or pocket. Enjoy it often, every day, as millions do. Act two of tonight's story on the FBI in Peace and War, The Polecats. Election Fraud Bureau, good morning. Oh, just one moment, I'll connect you. Oh, uh, yes, gentlemen. Good morning, miss. We have an appointment with the Attorney General. My name is Stevens. This is my colleague, Agent Reynolds, FBI. Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Richards is expecting you. Would you go right in, please? And uh, when my men moved to subpoena the voting books and records, there was considerable, perhaps deliberate, confusion from the start. But when those pages turned up missing... Well, that's when I almost called you to stay in Washington and forget the whole thing. I see. Well, I'm glad you didn't call, Mr. Richards. Yes, this looks kind of interesting. I'm glad you feel that way, gentlemen. What about the political setup, Mr. Richards? Can you brief us on that? Well, of course, that varies throughout the state. No, I mean locally. The counties involved in these missing pages. Oh, certainly. The party organization in those counties is identified closely with a gambling organization. Practically the same thing. The bigwig is a man named Heller, Barney Heller. He's a rough boy, but no one has ever been able to pin anything on him. Uh-huh. Now, our original directive was instigated by numerous complaints. Dead men were voting. There was tampering with voting machines and ballot boxes. At least one instance of an election board forgetting to count some 500-odd votes. I see. Then, after the directive had been approved by the governor, a different kind of complaint came in. Carelessness, lax procedures in guarding the voting records, even abuse of the order in the upstate counties mentioned. You had local police cooperation, didn't you? Oh, yes, complete cooperation on their part, but we found they just weren't manned sufficiently to cover all the polling places. One final question. Yes? Assuming that the missing pages are recovered, you'd still have to prove that a candidate benefited from fraudulent votes, wouldn't you? You mean in view of the fact that all ballots are secret? Yes. Well, we would still have to prove that, yes, but my feeling is the names of the registrants would be a giveaway. If we had the pages, I wouldn't worry about a legal remedy for proving the vote. If. That's what I meant about calling you to stay in Washington. I wouldn't hold you to it if you changed your mind. Sorry. We're stubborn that way. All right. Where do you want to start? Well, let's start with a question. Such as? If you were a bigwig in the party and had those missing papers in your possession, what would you do with them? I would burn them. Hmm. I was afraid you'd say that, Mr. Richards. So would I. <laughs> Lovely sight, isn't it? Eh? Couldn't be prettier. I always did go for wood burning fireplace. You're always welcome, Barney. For fifty thousand dollars, you can use it any time. <laughs> okay, rub it in all you want. It was worth it. Here's your envelope. Fifty even. You're satisfied? You look at me and say. Well, good. I always like my clients happy. Now, what about you? You're not? You know me, Barney. Money makes me almost delirious. <laughs> How about a nightcap with me? No, no, I have to beat it. Spread the good news, huh? Well, there uh, has been a couple of other nervous wrecks around town besides me. Yeah, I can imagine. Good night, Gordon. Thanks. Hmm. Ask me a favor sometime. Huh? Maybe I will. Uh, you had a hat, didn't you? Yeah, right here. You'll say good night to Helen for me. I will. Good night. Good night, Barney.
All right, he's gone. Nice work, Senor Kini. I'm glad you approved. Look, like you, I always approved that green stuff. I'll join you. Say when? Let it ride. Well, I usually do, Joe. <laughs> Here you are. Gracias. Here's to letting it ride, the whole 50,000. I'm drinking to that. Uh, Senor Kini. Mm hmm? This hella character looked like he knows his way around. You sure we can swing this? I never take chances, Joe. I'm always sure, one way or the other. One way or the other? If Barney Heller should balk, we always have the opposition to turn to. Don't we? I see. After all, what's offered one side should be offered the other. It's only right. Yes. I think maybe you've got something. My sense of fair play, Joe. Uh-huh. But you don't think Geller will balk? Oh, he'll balk, all right, at first. But you haven't seen me in action. I'll undoubtedly bring him around. I'm looking forward. All right, but don't forget for a single minute. You don't know me. You never saw me before. I never even heard of you. That's the idea. Any last thing you want me to go over? No, I got it cold backwards and forward. All right. Heller either comes through or he's just like you say, Senor Kinney. We always have the opposition to turn to. Hello. Gordon, this is Barney. Listen, can you get over here right away? Oh, Barney, help me. This is I'm urgent, Gordon. Breakfast. You better get here right away. Go on. Well, that's it, Gordon. An out and out hold up. Either I kick in what he wants or else. Where'd you get these photostats? Senor, I am sorry I cannot reveal the identity of my friend. I asked him the same thing. He won't spell a thing. You know his type. Yes, I know. Somebody crossed me, Barney, and when I find out who... You won't, senor. No one will ever find out. How much does he want? Hold your breath. One hundred thousand. One hundred thousand? Senor Heller and I are two men of a kind. We are both in trouble. I need money. He needs copies. <laughs> two of a kind, no? Two of a kind? Why, you... All right, shit. take it easy, Gordon. I, I felt the same way before you got here, but I'm afraid he's got the upper hand. Has he? So what do you think, senor? I'll tell you what I think. I think you've got nothing but bluff. Gordon. Don't you pay him a nickel, Barney. Not one nickel, you hear me? I know these scum. They threaten big, but they can't afford to go to the police. Police? Well, who has said something of going to the police? Huh? The opposition, Gordon. I don't often ask for something. But whoever you are, and however you... Came on the photostats. I ask you in the name of decency. It's an ugly thing to admit, senor, but you failed to move. Me. Why, you filthy right, go swine? On. Stop it. Your friend destroys you, senor Heller, with his tongue. Why, you. Barney, don't go. Give him a nickel. Take it easy, will you? Just step over here with me a minute, huh? You'll excuse us a minute. By all means, senor, go ahead. Barney, I tell you, it's no good. Play Save ball. it, Gordon. The attorney general was on the phone with me this morning. An agent, agent of the FBI is interviewing me tomorrow. Oh? I couldn't duck it. I know. They're checking everyone, I guess. They called me, too. So, I better play ball with this no, guy. Now, no. let me finish. Huh? I know how you feel. I don't like it either, but it's better than steel bars. Uh, maybe. But where are you going to raise that kind of money? There's still 50000 in the campaign fund. I'll borrow that. Maybe I can bring him down. Maybe. If you can't, Barney, the other fifty comes from me. Oh, now, listen. This isn't your I won't fault. have it any other way. And you're okay, Gordon. I won't forget this. Come on. Well? I'm writing you a check for $50,000. Sorry, senor. $100,000 and not check. Cash. All right, let's give him the money. Give it so we can get on the blazers out of it. I don't have that kind of cash on hand. Of course. I will wait 24 hours. What's to keep you from also selling to the opposition? I am getting tired of your insults. And senor. I'm getting... Gordon, Gordon, please. Come back this time tomorrow. Money will be ready. Very well. Senor, I will be here. Goodbye. Goodbye, Senor Kini. Goodbye. I am glad you decided to have me do business with you, Senor Heller. My ballot this year was the straight party ticket. I would have been most unhappy dealing with the other side. Adios, amigos. Back to the polecats in just a moment. Friends, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum is made to give you real chewing enjoyment. It tastes mighty good, and it's smooth and satisfying to chew on. At the same time, chewing delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum is an aid to your popularity. And here's why. The lively flavor of Wrigley Spearmint sweetens your breath, 
And the chewing action helps to keep your teeth clean, bright, and good-looking. So treat yourself to Wrigley's Spearmint Gum and enjoy it daily, as millions do. Get a few packages next time you're at the store. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Three of tonight's story on the FBI in Peace and War, The Polecats. Hello. Senor Kinney, this is Joe. Yes, Joe. Everything went all right. Just the way you said, Senor. One hundred thousand. You're 50 and he is 100. All right, I'll be home the rest of the day. Uh, have one of your boys make delivery. Not me, huh? Hardly. You and I don't see each other again until all this is blown over. Your boy will have your cut with him when he leaves here. Very well, senor. Goodbye, Joe. Call me in about a month. And, uh, by the way... See, si? It was a pleasure working with you. That was a fine piece of acting you did. Oh, compared to you, senor, I was nothing. And you have my word for it. The pleasure is mine. Hello, operator. I want to make a long-distance call to Milberg, the attorney general's office in the state building. Yes? Oh, sorry to disturb you, dear. There's a man here who says you're expecting him. Oh, thank you, Helen. Uh, would you ask him to come in, please? Uh, can you hold it just another second, Barney? Helen just came in for shopping money. Sure thing, Gordon. Take your time. Uh, tell him to come right in, Helen. Right in there, please. Come right in. Sit down. I'll be with you in a second. Uh, I'm sorry, Barney. These women eat up all your cash. So, uh, everything went all right, huh? All right, if you can call it that. I gave the skunk the money. He handed over the photostats. But Gordon, I still feel bad about letting now, you... Now, forget that. As long as you're out of the spot, that's all I care about. Well, I still say it was real big of you, and I... Gordon, can I call you back? The girl just signaled me that FBI agent is here. Sure, Barney. Call me later. At least you can play it cozy with him now, huh? <laughs> You can say that again. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye, Barney. Uh, I'm sorry, but that call sort of tied in. You know what I mean? Well, that's all right. Uh, sit down, sit down. Thank you. I see you have something for me? Yes, I do. Care for a drink? No, thanks. Cigar, cigarette? I'm smoking myself. All right, I'll have a cigarette with you. Here you are. Much obliged. Uh, there's a lighter right there. Mm hmm. Well, uh, <clears throat> we. Uh, might as well settle what you came for. We might as well. In your briefcase? That's right. Well, then, what's the matter? Nothing. I was just thinking what a cool customer you are, Mr. Kinney. Yes? <laughs> what makes you say that? Well, as a federal agent, I've interviewed many people in my time. Federal agent? Beg pardon? You mean... Well, that is, I thought... Yes? You thought what, Mr. Kinney? You're the FBI man I spoke with over the phone... Agent Stevens? You thought I was someone else? <sighs> Please forgive me, Mr. Stevens. As a matter of fact, yes, I did think you were someone else. <laughs> if I'd known it was you, what... <laughs> no wonder you thought I was a cool customer. Who did you think I was, Mr. King? Oh, someone unimportant. It doesn't matter. No? Someone far different from you, believe me. I guess Joe is different. What? You'd better answer that, Mr. Kinney. Joe. You'd better answer. Here, go ahead. Uh, uh, hello? Kenny, this is Vince. I can't talk to you now. Don't listen. Listen to me now. I'm talking to you. A government agent just arrested Barney. What's that? Your Joe character pulled a fast one, Kenny. Sold Barney out to the cops and sold you out to Barney. I thought you'd want to know that a couple of the boys are on their way over to take care of you, and if I were you... Bad news? I... Oh, I had something for you, didn't I? Two things, as a matter of fact. A photostatic copy of one of those registry book pages and, uh... Oh, yes, this warrant for your arrest. You don't look so good, Mr. Kinney. But between the two of us, you'd look a lot worse if Barney Heller ever got to you before I did. Well, shall we go? I have a car waiting outside and, uh... 
Oh, Gordon, I don't mean to keep disturbing you, dear, but there are two strange-looking men at the front door who insist on seeing you. Well, looks like I got here just in time, Mr. Kinney. Helen. Yes, dear? Tell the, uh, the strange-looking gentlemen I, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint them. Tell them your husband has a previous engagement. Well, all right, but they're really quite insistent. I know, but so am I, even more insistent. Ready, Mr. Kinney? Uh, I'm ready. Let's go. With the arrest of Barney Heller and Gordon Kinney, and with the photostatic copies of the missing registry book pages, the state's attorney general was able to present a complete picture of corrupt voting practices at specific county polls. All connected were subsequently indicted, and a recount of votes by special investigating teams brought the final totals to their intended result, thereby electing the people's choices while eliminating the poll cats. Friends, when you want a tasty treat that satisfies you without being rich or filling, chew a stick of Wrigley Spearmint Gum. There's lots of delicious, long-lasting flavor in a stick of Wrigley Spearmint Gum. Real taste enjoyment. And besides, you get enjoyment from the pleasant chewing. It gives you a nice little lift and helps tide you over till mealtime. Helps keep your mouth moist, your taste fresh, too. So, do what millions do. Keep Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy and enjoy it every day. It tastes so good, lasts so long, and gives you real chewing enjoyment. In tonight's story, Alan Hewitt played the part of Gordon Kenny, Bill Zuckert was Barney Heller. This radio dramatization for the FBI in Peace and War was written by Jack Anson Fink. These programs are produced and directed by Betty Mandeville. All names and characters used on the program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This program is based on Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. And the broadcast does not imply endorsement, authorization, or approval by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you real chewing enjoyment. Invite you to listen to next Wednesday's story, The Four Flusher, on the FBI in Peace and War. Same time, same station. This is the CBS Radio Network. Stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. That's the kind of driving most of us do. And as a direct result, adhesive engine deposits build up on vital lubrication points, drag down performance. But by taking two important steps, you can change all this. Get a new kind of performance from your higher horsepower car. Step one is to have your Shell dealer put Shell engine conditioning oil in place of your regular motor oil for 1,000 miles. This removes adhesive deposits from engine parts, holds them in suspension so the deposits can be removed when the oil is especially made for today's high-performance engines. It hushes engine knock, which has the effect of increasing the octane value of your gasoline and stretches your gasoline mileage up to 15%. Try these two steps to new high performance. Try Shell engine conditioning oil and then new X100 motor oil premium 10W30 at your Shell dealers. <laughs>